Apple iPad mini is an all-time classic device. It's so classic, it comes with a lot of yesteryear -yes specs like liquid retina, 60 hertz display. I spent the whole of last week with this iPad mini 7. It became my daily runner, replacing my iPad Air 5, the M1 generation. I literally put it to use in a real world scenario. I wanted to see how well it performed in a real world scenario and how it complements my lifestyle and whether it can do better job than my iPad Air 5th generation. After all, it shares a lot of specification from that device with a smaller form factor. So get your popcorn ready and let's jump straight into the review. So let's talk about the price first. In UK, the Wi-Fi model starts at 500 pounds and you're looking at 650 pounds if you wanna buy the cellular model. D depends on which model you go for, there's still three storage options starting at 128 GB, which is still better than the predecessor, the sixth generation iPad mini. So if you're thinking of specking this to the maximum, you're looking at over thousand pounds, which includes the Pencil Pro option. Now, let's talk about the build of this product. It's made from 100% recycled aluminium. It looks really, really good. It's got a unibody design. The purple doesn't look too bad, actually. It's metallic, but it gives up the silver vibes. And first time ever, they've written iPad mini on it. And it's, it feels good in the hand and I can hold it with one hand. I mean, I do have fairly large hands and I can hold it. As, as with every other update that Apple is making, this also comes with the USB-C. You've got the You've got the loudspeakers on the side. You've also got two microphones. It's really good. It fits in my trouser pocket really, really well. And I've been able to sort of carry this around uh, more than my my bigger iPad here. Um, but the small factor does really, really good. But one thing I really, really don't like is the placement of the volume rocker. So you've got the power button here and the volume rockers here. If you're using on the portrait, um, you've got the fingerprint scanner go into the um, tablet but then if you want to sort of access the volume it's on the top left or right and it's even worse if you go landscape mode put fingerprint scanner here but then your volume rockers are here which is fine but every time if you want to do apple pay or something like that you still have to do this so i think they should have probably moved the volume rockers on this side so if you're looking at it in this way so the vol the power buttons here the volume rockers are here I think this would have been a much better design to move the volume rockers on this side. What that would mean is if you go on landscape, you still have the options to increase the volume up or down. And it also supports the Pencil Pro. If you do decide to go with the third party pencil or, or any other pencil, um, the magnet uh, isn't strong. Um, so you can see here, it, it's very flimsy, it comes off. And another key feature uh, for this iPad is that it now supports the Wi-Fi 6. Testing this against my um, 15 Pro Max, which has the A17 Pro chip, and then my iPad Air, and I've also tested it against the Samsung FE tablet. And surprisingly, this didn't come out on top. I was hoping this to come up on top when put against the iPhone 15 Pro Max, but that wasn't the case. So I was really, really surprised by that. But overall, in terms of build, it feels nice. It's It fits well in the hand. Apart from where the buttons are, it's a massive, massive go. So let's talk about the display. As I mentioned earlier, this comes with a lot of yesteryear tech. What that means is this still has a liquid retina display. It's 60 Hertz. And even though it's got the highest PPI out of all the iPad devices, depending on what you're watching in terms of content or reading, the 8.3 inch on a 60 Hertz seem to be a bit problematic. So the 60 Hertz on the iPhone models, the base iPhone models, are fine like I'm not a I don't have a problem with 60 Hertz I don't think you'd notice it in most of the time but on a on a screen of this size it does depend on where you what divide what you're reading what you're watching um it does make a difference I think 60 Hertz on, on an 8.3 inch device it's it's probably a bad move from Apple and this is 2024 we should be at least getting 90 Hertz but one thing I really really like about the actual display is that it replaces the book for me. It's it's actually smaller than a book. The reading is really, really good. And watching content, it's a lot better than I imagined. Um, I wasn't expecting, so most of the time I'm using my iPad Air to watch a lot of the content. I can um, pair up my iPad Air with this Mac this keyboard case uh, and I've always watched content that way, but uh, this seems to have replaced quite a lot of that for me because I can take it to the bed, I can I can hold it with one hand, I can watch it, I can be on the move, and the display is really, really good. One thing to be aware of is that 
it only has 500 uh, nit brightness so if you're taking it about that it might not get really really bright now let's look at the camera i've taken a lot of photos i've taken it outside um, and tested the camera as much as i can just to sort of share with you guys how well it does i mean if you're if you're going if you're looking for a device that is compact and the whole selling point is that you can travel with it we need to be able to see how well does the camera hold up in terms of your everyday requirements the device comes with 12 megapixel ultra wide on the front with center stage which keeps you in the center of the screen on face and video calls it's a good feature for ipad devices in general because they are bigger and would be quite hard to center so the device can center it for you there is also 12 megapixel on the back with a digital zoom i've taken a lot of pictures as i mentioned and videos using the 12 megapixel real camera the 4K videos and 30 frames per second look really good. And in general, the camera is a really good option for a quick point and shoot for things like documents, menus, and maps and stuff like that. The photos though, will have too much of noise on the darker areas, even on broad daylight. But again, you're better off using your phone to take photos and sync them up to the iCloud to view on your iPad. The other thing I've noticed is that it comes up with a digital zoom. So I've tried zooming a lot. It's not really, really effective. But then again, if you want to sort of take, if you're carrying your iPad and then your phone, I'd probably recommend that you put your iPad down and then take a phone to take a photo and just, just view them on your iPad using iCloud. It's, it's, it's okay if you're taking notes of a small items, but the digital zoom is a proper letdown. And also the, it's just not sharp enough um so in terms of camera it's 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 pretty weak another thing out of the box is that this ipad comes with ios 18 um but i have had some troubles actually just setting up this ipad uh, as soon as i opened it i mean i've gone with the most easiest options in terms of not to transfer everything from my other devices into this device and i've also tried to set it up as a brand new device without any link to any of my other devices and the device froze straight away. I had to switch it off, restart it and go through the process one more time to actually get past the initial setup phase. And then I've, if you would have seen my other videos on the tips and tricks on iPad, I would have mentioned about removing bloatware. So I'm really keen on removing a lot of the apps that gets built in in here, unwanted apps, uh, as soon as possible so I can start to use the iPad as how I want. And as I was moving the apps around, they just disappeared. I could not find them. But when I go onto the app store, they will still be available. And then when I click open, they would appear and they'll stay there. But it was just very glitchy. I guess the first few hours, I I've, I've was noticing weird things in terms of haptics not working properly. It needed a really, really um, good restart. Um, and, and that was slightly concerning for a new device with an A17 Pro chip coming with an iOS 18, it had lots of glitches that I wasn't seeing on any other devices. And then also Apple Intelligence, it's available now. I haven't had the chance to test it. So the jury is out on that. I don't wanna probably talk about talk too much about it, mainly because Apple have done all the talking uh, without delivering on it. So let's reserve our judgments on Apple intelligence later. Once I got past the glitchy period, um, it's it's snappy, It's it became responsive. I had to make some changes. So do check out that video on a few things that you can do. And once I made the changes, things were fine and it's okay, It's the, the, the software works fine. Now let's talk about the sound. If you are going to replace your daily driver with this device, or if you're going to travel around this device, sound is very important. It could be on meetings, it could be on FaceTime, it could be watching something. Fit to this against the iPad Air, the Samsung tablet, and my iPhone 15. I found the Samsung tablet to have the better sound overall, but this thing came out uh, last but that's really weird because when it's up and firing by itself it feels a bit like the sound is very very good it is so good that the screen started to vibrate and i was like hang on a minute what's going on why the screen's vibrating which is why i started testing three devices then when i tested three devices all of a sudden this is this had the the least amount of sound possible so for a device with the least amount of sound it has a lot of vibration so if you're using, if you're listening to music and then you're scrolling, you could literally feel the vibration on your fingers. If you manage to get your hands on this device, 
do try to scroll as you, or interact with the device as you're playing um, something with the sound on. I mean, even after 60%, it's starting to sort of you feel the vibration in the fingers the ipad air doesn't do that the samsung doesn't do that the phone does but the phone is again it's a smaller device it's most of the time in the pocket it's not as bad as the vibration on in here and that's really important if things like that annoy you i would probably not recommend this device whilst this ipad is good enough to do basic everyday tasks in terms of reading emails and being small enough to fit in your pocket so you can take it around and take photos and do whatever you want to do with it and it's snappy. The, there are some annoying things with it. So for example, some of these things are because of Apple's decision making. I mean, this only supports the Pencil Pro option, which means if you would have had the previous versions, you have to fork out to buy one. All the Pencil Pro does is it gives you extra features, but why fork out another 100 pounds or more on a pencil when you could buy something um, on Amazon for cheap. So some of the things that confuse me is Apple's design choices. For example, the Pencil Pro, you need the Pencil Pro to take notes uh, and get the best out of this, this device. It doesn't support any previous models and the, the, the whole pencil fiasco from Apple is super confusing. I'd rather, you know, Apple just get one pencil that supports across all of the devices. I think that might be the case moving forward with the Pencil Pro, but you just never know uh, with Apple. So this now supports Pencil Pro or the USB-C Pencil, but I'd recommend you to buy a cheaper one out of Amazon. And that seems to be the theme with this device, right? Like there's no smart connectors in here. Therefore, you cannot, you, you wouldn't have anything like the Magic Keyboard or any other accessories that take advantage of that. Again, you're relying on buying a third party accessories um so that's so i find that incredibly annoying that apple has just sort of sold a device of 500 pounds but then you have to spend even more money to actually get the maximum out of this device i mean another thing i found really annoying as i mentioned earlier is the screen is just not responsive enough and i don't know why but sometimes when i'm pressing on something it takes two or three touches for it to be registered and the same app on an iPhone or on a bigger device is just much better. I just think the 8.3 inches, for whatever reason, um, means it just thinks that the, the apps are just not designed correctly. Like I, I use BBC Sport a lot. When I use the 11 inch iPad, the it gives me the desktop view, which is perfect. Or when I'm on my phone, it gives you mobile view. It just feels a bit like this 8.3 inches gets uh, a view that is just sort of in between desktop and mobile and it's super confusing and it's just the website just aren't responsive enough and you just have to click in and around the options so i found that super super frustrating and man i resorted back to my um ipad air every time i started having problems with some of the devices and the last annoying thing i've noticed was the haptic feedback uh, on how to improve the ipad and the again in my video on tips and tricks i would have mentioned that everyone should be changing the haptic feedback from a default to fast, but it feels a bit like even at the fast setup, it's still slow. And to me, it, that takes a little getting used to because I'm so, for, for a whole year, I'm using iPad Air and I know I'm holding a screen for half a second, and but here I'm holding a scene for, screen for one second to confirm my choices. I mean, if there's a half a second difference, it might not mean much, but when you're using it every single day and you're moving from one device to another, that makes a difference. And I just can't put my head around the fact that why a device that with, with an A17 Pro chip and an and upgrade on a previous version feel a bit like the haptic is, is a little bit slower than any other devices that I've used. What I think would have made this device really, really good and taking it to the next level is if Apple would have given this an action button. I mean, we all know that the A17 Pro, when it came out on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, Apple gave everybody an action button. And the fact that they've got the buttons wrong here, they could have given us an action button and that would have made a massive, massive difference to this device. Another thing I think um, Apple could do to improve the usability of this device is wireless charging. I mean, this is small enough. I mean, it's smaller than the iPad Air. It'd be nice to sort of put it down and get the benefit of the wireless charging. And again, as mentioned, the smart connectors, that would have been a nice to have. I mean, being able to sort of use accessories that are part of the ecosystem, like let's say, for example, you've got the 
AirPods that work across all the devices, why can't the pencil work across all the devices? And then also the camera, whilst it's good for quick point and shoot, the spatial camera would have been nice. I mean, that would have completed the whole ecosystem that Apple's talking about, right? The iPhone, the base iPhone models get the spatial camera. Why didn't this get the spatial camera? One other thing I've also noticed is that I went to the Apple store to have a look at the other colors to compare with these colors, um, to compare with the purple. And I've noticed there was only one, maybe two demo models of the iPad mini. That just goes to show even Apple doesn't care about this device. They've released it to make sure that it supports Apple intelligence and they want to sort of talk about, you know, all the devices now contains, um, all the device that you can buy in the market has support for Apple intelligence. But the fact that there were more Apple Pro Visions demo, demo devices available in the store says a lot of lot about where Apple see this device. So having said that, so who, who is this device for then? So we've not, so I've noticed that Apple doesn't value it enough. I mean, it's not given us new features at all. I mean, it's given you a tech that's available in a newer body and a newer chip and the newer chip is only supporting the Apple intelligence. So who's actually buying these devices? So as I ask the question, I come to realize this device fit is for people that travel around trains so for example when i'm taking into the office when i'm on a on a packed commute i can whip this up and i can still consume the content without actually feeling the weight of the device and without feeling it being too small this is this is very good for actually con content consumption or reading so anyone who are going to bed reading books they can use this device now stand it on a little tray uh, on on your plane as well like it's a it's a niche. It's, it, it, uh, it doesn't appeal to a lot of the people, but I think that Apple are probably not making a loss on these devices, which is why they haven't let it go like the mini iPhones. But that's my take. I think it only appeals to certain type of people, people that are willing to move, people that, people that want probably a smaller device, but just big enough than the iPhone. That's confusing. Okay, so having said all of that, what is my final verdict? Has it got enough to replace my iPad Air? as a daily runner i'm afraid not that's mainly because apple haven't done this device any justice whatsoever i mean even if you go into the store it's got it's been put into the, the furthest corner possible with one or two demo devices um it comes with the yes they it takes i mean apple could have given us a lot of the new features they didn't do it and i didn't i didn't really want to make this video saying the same thing as everybody else did but unfortunately whilst the positives in terms of taking it around consuming content when you know i haven't got a i haven't got a seat in the train and i'm still using a bigger device and i and i can still type emails and consume content that's all really nice and read my book and all of that but but i i have started to miss the the smart connectors and every single accessories that are supported as the smart connectors I've started to miss and I've also started to miss the fact that Apple Pencil is no longer usable on the mini and I've been using it I've been using a third-party pencil which doesn't feel good what I missed outweighed a lot of the positives for me and therefore this device has failed its task of replacing my day runner iPad Air that's it guys you've come to the end of the video if you liked what I said um, if you like my, the way how I do the reviews, please leave me a like and a sub to the channel. There's more to come and I'm looking to hit the 600. Till then, peace out.